Dolmen is a game that I've been aware of for a while now. Having watched over a gameplay video of this sci-fi Souls-like title, it has been one I've casually kept tabs on over the years. Now I have the privilege to get some hands-on experience with the game and let me tell you, this took great pleasure in kicking my ass. So we're set in a universe where our scientific boffins have managed to push humanity to a point where several planets have been colonized. Of course, big greedy corporations have taken advantage of this and fight for control over the resources. Held within the confines of Revion Primar Dome and Crystals, which have the power to interact between dimensions and completely revolutionize space travel. As everything has descended into chaos, you're tasked with heading planet side to recover the crystals and make it out alive. The opening is alien and foreboding, but on the other hand, it's how many of these types of games have started in the past, it's familiar. It incorporates all the well-worn trappings, an opaque narrative enemies that respawn with each death, and a leveling system tied to experience you're at risk of losing should you die. A lot of the atmospheric voltage just doesn't land because the setup is a retread done to death at this point. However, Dolman isn't afraid to try something new. Certain enemies will have weaknesses to certain elements, but it's their lingering status effects that make their use worthwhile. For example, if you manage to inflict the light wave status effect on an enemy, they will periodically discharge flames, burning themselves and nearby enemies. If that discharge happens to hit another enemy afflicted with light wave fire will ricochet back and forth between them, doing tons of damage to them and any friends caught in the middle. It's a powerful strategy to help weed out mobs of weaker foes but it comes with some risk as you'll burn through your energy bar, which is also your primary method to heal. Using energy to heal sacrifices a portion of your bar and can leave you with nothing to make use of until a checkpoint can be reached. Checkpoints scattered throughout the area will teleport you back to your ship where you can level up change equipment and craft new gear that you can use to cater your stats to the playstyle you want. The gameplay loop checks all of the boxes to make a competent Souls-like experience. But there are numerous annoyances big and small that eat away at Dolman and made it far more frustrating to preview as a result. You can also choose specific starting loadouts to give yourself a bit of an edge at the outset. I went with one that gave me dual-wielded energy weapons. You can also choose single-handed weapons, shields and two-handed weapons. If you have a shield or two-handed weapon, you can parry enemy attacks. Combat in Dolman is pretty much exactly what you find in every other souls like. Which is to say that the controls are very responsive and combat is tight and challenging. Obviously, this is a tough game and it doesn't shy away from laying you flat even early on. In the very beginning, I mostly went up against these weird insect creatures. They're not all that strong individually, but the game doesn't mind throwing half a dozen of them at you at one time which saw me dying occasionally, shortly after there are human-esque enemies that are much more dangerous. I noticed early on in my campaign that the freedom you are given is quite great. If you do not want to take a particular route, you can choose another one. The upgrade system is limited only by the material you find in the world, and the same goes for your abilities, which can be upgraded however you want. You are not locked into a specific class although you have to choose one at the beginning. It works just like it does in Dark Souls. The problem is that the enemies can be much more difficult if you do not find a good route. Once I got to the bosses, I felt they were the highlights. You were offered a classic form of game design, where the key to defeating the bosses is to learn how the boss move and attack. One of the early bosses I fought was a massive spider. The size of the bosses is a bonus and in my opinion makes them far more intimidating, even though, in general, I find them a little easy and far easier to read than the ones you find in Dark Souls perhaps what's most exciting about Dolman, however, is the range of environments and enemies it's set to offer. After beating the large arachnid-like boss we were whisked away to a new location that offered a vastly different experience. Dark, oppressive corridors were replaced with bright, 
open areas filled with sand, and our enemies were more advanced and ferocious. It seems like you won't really know what's around the next corner in Dolmen. Keeping you on your toes and invested in the action. After our hands-on time with Dolmen, we do not expect it to blow us away at launch. It should make plenty of Souls-like fans fans happy though, offering an experience that's similar to what they're used to but with some twists that give it a bit of welcome freshness. It certainly seems better than Hellpointin. With some time left before the game's launch there's every chance that additional polish will be bestowed upon it to iron out some of its rough edges. Ultimately, my short look at this adventure allowed me to check out a couple of unique areas the aforementioned one with spider creatures in a wasteland factory where deadly cybernetic soldiers lurked in large. Unkillable creatures baked the ground with sweeping rays of death. They led up to boss encounters that featured their own unique challenge to conquer. Such as an insect queen that unleashed her skittering offspring on me even as I tried to dodge her much larger claws and spit attacks. The biggest thing Dolman is trying to do is how it handles gear. As you travel across Revion Prime and defeat enemies in open caches, you'll find pieces of things. Pieces of monsters. Pieces of old tech pieces of machinery. These can be taken back to your ship to be turned into new gear. I guess I should mention your ship. It acts as a sort of hub area in Dolmen. When you find a bonfire beacon, you can transport immediately back to your ship where there are pods for leveling up and a workbench to build new gear. The gear has this DIY look that I love. Some of it is Monster Hunter-esque, seeing you use bits of flesh, bone, and sinew to make futuristic armor out of primal pieces. It is visually impressive, and the slate of gear I was able to build in the preview was expansive enough that I'm more than excited for the full game. <laughs>